back to artists leaving Spotify. Right, let's have a realistic conversation. Not a, and so we could really get into the business model of it all as well. Like, not a one off. If Jacory wanted to hop off of Spotify and then go direct, Jacory could probably do it successfully, right? Make it happen. Cool. You made more money or maybe you're making a livable wage. That's great. But let's talk about the masses. Like, if we really saw an impact, like, oh man, most artists leave Spotify. And all DSPs, because let's stop, like, people have this Spotify conversation. You can't just leave Spotify. You got to leave DSPs if you really want to fight that fight. Otherwise, it's null and void. So you're leaving DSPs, and you're going direct in that way. Do you think that's possible, or what do you think it looks like for the for the masses? Not, not a one-off one artist here or there, because there are those that already exist. I mean, I think it's, I think anything is possible. I imagine there are artists who don't have their music on the streaming platforms who are making a living. And it just depends on who their fans are, what their strategies are, what their community looks like. I, I think exclusivity and, and physical releases, that kind of thing, work really well if you have the community built. So when I go on tour with Soul, for example, we're selling vinyl and clothing, and that saves us on tour. So Spotify, our music's on Spotify, but I, you know, I don't even pay attention to the royalty statements, be from 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 the. Uh, labels or you know who whoever is is giving us those recordings uh sound recording royalties it's so inconsequential and on the other hand there are artists whose consumers are almost entirely on the streaming platforms and so it's incredibly important for you to nurture those connections i, I think if you're in a position to do all of the above and benefit from it, great. That's amazing because now you have so many different royalty streams working for you. And that's an amazing thing because then you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. But if more traditional methods of releasing music and selling your, your assets, such as vinyl and uh, CDs and tapes and whatever, if that's, what has worked for you and you just are deciding that you don't want to invest that kind of energy in Spotify, then cool. Or if you want to leave one or more streaming platforms because of moral reasons or because of political reasons, I, I respect it all. I, I think um, it's just a matter of figuring stuff out. I, I, I think we get wrapped up in the platforms and the methods of sales rather than the viability of sales themselves. If we're having a conversation about whether or not you should get off Spotify, let me ask you how many fans you have that are listening to you on Spotify to begin with. And what is your fan outreach strategy? And what does your community look like? Mm -hmm. And most artists, you know, unfortunately are putting the cart before the horse in these conversations because they don't even have an album up on Spotify yet. And they're just psyching themselves out. I, I find a lot of creatives are like that. We put the problems before the actions. It's like you don't even know if these problems exist. You're gonna, you're gonna life. It, the second you decide to wake up in the morning, you're gonna be faced with challenges. But in the music community, we're dreaming about our problems before we even open our eyes. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's silly to me because you'll have a whole hour long debate with someone about the merits. Of, really, uh, of taking your music off of the streaming platforms and then you realize they have one song out from five years ago with, with three listens. And you're like, why are we having this conversation? This isn't relevant to you. You have to figure out how to get your music to people first. Mm. And whatever method you find works for you, cool. I, I would personally, I'm not telling people what to do. I would personally encourage you to explore more than one option especially if one option is working but even if it's not like my thing is where where there are people who 
listen to music, get your music there and then decide, but give it a real effort. Some people would be like, yeah, I put my beats on beat stars. I put 10 beats on beat stars and a year later I wasn't rich. So I got off. I put an album on Spotify and nothing happened. It's like, that's not okay. You're hopeless. But for the people who really are putting forth an effort, they're going to have more experiential anecdotal and um, quantitative data so they can make better decisions, but you got to do it and you have to do it at a high level for a long time in order to even have the insight to figure out what's working, what's not, what needs to be changed, how it needs to be changed, et cetera. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think you, you touched on the important part of it is I don't think artists are looking at these platforms as just a marketing, a marketing tool, right? Like because the money is typically where it starts first. Right. So in your example, if I'm the artist looking at it like, man, I could hypothetically go build a million fans on Spotify. But then if I do, I'm not, I, you know, I might not be getting paid fairly because of what I've been seeing. But we're looking at it from the side like, yeah, but it, it still helped you get a million people. You know what I'm saying? That if you're moving smartly, you should be able to do other things with those people. You know what I'm saying? Ass assuming, um, you know, you just become better educated by the point or, or the right people get around you. But I literally think that's what most of the issues stem is like, hey, you're thinking about the money from the platform before yep. you're thinking about the reach that the platform can afford you. Yeah, because no, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're not taking full advantage of these moments, then you're just wasting your time. If you play a show for a thousand people and you get off stage and leave the venue without taking photos with people, without sitting at a merch table and trying to sell physical product, without having an email list that people can sign up for, what did you just do? You just wasted all of those precious potential fans that 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 was an amazing opportunity same with spotify if you have you know if you if you suddenly get a thousand monthly listeners what can you do and i don't have a, a quick answer because it's, it's different for everybody but what can you do to convert those listeners into actual community members how can you reach out how can you figure out who they are where they are how to talk to them more directly and i think that's another problem but it, it, like i don't want to overwhelm people who are watching this and think wow i got to just be this data analyst who's constantly doing 12 things at once you just have to plan and when you mess up which you will you just have to have the uh the self-awareness to recognize that you messed up and then the 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 drive to correct that so the next time you don't you know a big thing that I don't think people focus on enough is I've never seen an artist not be able to sell fan direct because they're on Spotify. Like yeah. Spotify doesn't mean you're going to make less or more and taking your music off of Spotify doesn't mean you're going to make less or more. It's a completely different experience than direct and to have like all of your music as leverage. I just haven't seen it play out as well as people kind of imagine, maybe as like a short-term market marketing tactic for a, a second, but long-term, it never really plays out um, that well. Like for instance, I always say, as an example, I remember when Prince was going so hard, keeping his intellectual property offline. And I was, ha well, I was having conversations with my dad and I was trying to like get more references prints and i'm like man if this stays on for too long he, he's just gonna miss the boat in terms of the future generations you'll have this great artist that you know there'll be a chasm maybe somebody eventually finds it and brings it back but there's just a, gen a generation that can't acknowledge it because they can't consume it it just is what it is right obviously you know that that moment passed he allowed things to be out there but that's the re a small artist can't afford that, right? It's like you're trying to build in a silo and that just doesn't really make much sense to me. Yeah, I was going to say Prince can can kind of do whatever he wants. It's not going to affect his his life or his legacy in any real way. But yep. again, you know, if it's a symbolic gesture, I respect that too. I, I'm not here to tell people what to do with their music. I, I think um, if you want to stand on your protest of spotify stand on it I, great because you know they pissed me off too 
that's cool. Like if we want to get into the like symbolism and things like that, but I think a lot, but when we talk about like straight business, mm -hmm. all right. A lot, which most artists are really speaking from that. A lot of the symbolism, if they were making a certain amount of money, that symbolism argument wouldn't be there. All right. I don't, I hadn't heard any artist who's making 5K a month make that uh, that argument or 75K a month. Like, I haven't seen any of those people who are making, which is kind of sad from, from an ethics standpoint. Right. But again, oh. business is, is something that we often associate with the erosion of, of morals. It's a new year and I know you want to go to a new level in your music career. And luckily for you, that's what we do here. Help artists grow, get more streams, grow their fan base, do shows, get connected with people who can help them and have direct conversations to help you build out your strategy. These are the type of opportunities that we provide for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. But the thing is, it's not always open to new people. But at the beginning of every year, we get a little loose. We say, all right, let's go ahead and let a flood of new people in. And once we hit our new registration cap, it gets a lot harder because we got to slow down on letting people in off of the wait list. So apply now at nolabelsnecessary.com because the faster you apply, the faster you get in. Absolutely free. Back to the video. We have one post that we put on our IG page where it was addressing this subject and you wouldn't believe how many artists would be like, oh man, that's perfect. Like get rid of them, There's less competition or like this is like, and, and we're talking about artists that don't even have a lot of streams themselves, mm -hmm. right? So like, I think there is a worked um, idea of how things are supposed to go one way or another. And I think artists don't even realize that they're not all on one accord. And the reality to me is, again, just going back to the sheer business. One, this is a marketing platform. We've always promoted it as something where this is not where you should be looking for the majority of your revenue. I always said Spotify is losing money and to be looking to like looking for the best out of a company that's losing money, why they're losing money, how it's ran is a whole nother thing, but they're losing money. They're looking at podcasting, right. To try to make money. That's not really going how they want to want it to go. So if you're like trying to optimize the margin on a sinking ship, it doesn't really like work that well because beyond Spotify, let's look at streaming models. Everybody who's doing the streaming model is like, this sucks. Like all companies, and then you're within <laughs> that funnel also complaining. There's like nobody's like killing it in streaming the way they want to. You could say, yes, these people are billionaires or these people are, but even from their perspective, they're like, oh man, we had to figure this shit out. Well, the three majors are killing it, I'd say, if they're making majors are, are different billions of dollars a day. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, it's it, it's it's helpful to keep that in perspective because otherwise there would be absolutely no reason for these spotify uh, these streaming platforms to exist right because if they're not making money and the artists are all disgruntled why does it exist well the consumers like it but yeah the the, the businesses are there to make money off of the consumers they're not there to provide enjoyment for free to the consumers while they hemorrhage for sure collateral but so it's someone's making money and that's the reason we have it so i don't know if it's going to go anywhere anytime soon uh just because it's it's centralized that's that's how the the music business works the, the majors centralize assets and they do so on behalf of all of us even if we have nothing to do with the conversation or we have no connection directly to those labels so that that's that's problematic but i i think um there you know either we just are angry about it and do nothing or we're angry about it and we figure a way to to still survive and thrive but what's the other way right because you have for instance like when soundcloud was you know falling down i don't know it was been maybe four years ago now and they were going through it of course you look at it, eh, there's no way they're going to get rid of SoundCloud. Somebody's going to have to buy it because it's too big of a centralized all right, resource. You have all this data. And the reason things I feel like go back to centralization, especially when you talk about music, is it's so hard to adjust consumer behavior. So once you have something there at that threshold, 
So like, all right, we got to figure out how to make this work and lean into it as much as possible until something else happens to happen. But you know, it's so hard to force a new thing to happen when it comes to, you know, that level of consumption. So yeah, you can't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what they tried to do with NFTs and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's a lot, a lot of money that went, that went into that. And, you know, all you got was more education about it. And a lot of people who still don't know what the hell NFTs are. People don't even realize, like I, I told people, like, I don't know how long I've been in music, whatever now, but like it's maybe two years ago now. And I remember talking to my dad about something going on with Spotify. And he was like, what's Spotify? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, I had to restart the whole conversation, you know? And that goes back to speak. Like, certain audience is maybe your monetization is not there. If you're trying to make money off of him, <laughs> there's a lot more money. Like, I think you know, he knows he, he knows YouTube music and all that stuff well. Not YouTube music, but listens to mu uh, music on YouTube and a lot of these other platforms. So there, you might be cutting out a way to reach your audience that's better for sure. But it doesn't come from like, I don't, you're not going to make money because you cut Spotify out outside of right. maybe the, the focus that you might have on something better, but not like from the fans, they don't look at it that way. That way they don't care. Yeah. And I mean, it's easy to just upload a song to Spotify and call it a day. It's, it's a lot harder and more expensive to create physical merchandise and a campaign around that. So I think a lot of people, I think this is what's funny to me about the conversation. A lot of people will say, a lot of artists will say, well, just, just do physical merch. Just do these kinds of drops. Just do a uh, limited. It's like that. What do you mean? Just mm. it's all hard. Let's, let's not act like dropping out of Spotify is just this pill that you swallow. And the next day you wake up successful. <laughs> The amount of marketing, man, that goes into that, and uh, uh, in addition to the the logistics and film, you still basically have to do the same overwhelming load that you already complain about yeah. marketing, and then you have to add more logistics. That the same, it's it's all hard. My point is, it's all hard. Yeah. So if you have people saying, "Well, just simply get off of Spotify," or simply just just upload your your music to Spotify, it's like neither of those options whether you eliminate one over here, add one over here, take away the immense amount of work that you're going to need to build community in order to create sustainability in your music career. 